<laughs> We're live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to BYU Swim and Dive webinar series, Zoom meeting, whatever this thing is called. Welcome. We are happy that you guys are here, and you are on time. You guys are the swimmers and divers who show up early and are going to get everything done that you need to get done. So, uh, my name is Jordan Fletcher. I'm an assistant coach, part-time assistant coach here at BYU. I, this will be my third year as a paid assistant coach, and I'm having the time of my life. Also on this call, we have head swimming coach, John Brooks. We, shortly to join here, we have a head diving coach, Tice Routson. We have NCAA qualifier, Kennedy Cribs, and also NCAA qualifier, Jared Shaw. We're all here and we are gonna answer some questions. We're gonna introduce ourselves, show you a little bit about our facilities. We have a few videos to show you and then we're just gonna answer as many questions as we can. So without further ado, I'd like to turn the time over to head coach, John Brooks. Go ahead, John. Yeah, uh, can you hear me out there? Jordan, can you hear me? I can hear. Okay. Well, I'm in the bottom of the pool here. And uh, I don't know if I do a uh, flip around here. We'll do a little video of our work. The pool is empty right now because we're doing a little maintenance on it. But we'll be ready to go when the season's up and running. We got two video, awesome video boards up there. Um, here's our diving structures over here. I'm going to do a little very slow little panoramic here. Is our uh, bulkhead over here. Um, we have awesome blocks at our pool because uh, we invested in those. We have these awesome Omega blocks that go over here when we send the width, the width or the length of the pool and all along the width of the pool. And then we have a, a competitive or a, a warm up pool over on the other side of the pool over there. Office is over there. So, uh, yeah. What else do you want me to show you, Jordan? Oh. You're on mute, Jordan. Good call. Zoom problem. But yeah, that looks pretty good. Tell me a little bit about yourself, John, and also tell me a little bit about the team. What's it like swim, swimming or diving for BYU Swim Dive? Well, this is an awesome place. Uh, I'm, I'm in my 40s. I've been at BYU for 12 years. I guess this fall will be my 13th year at BYU, and I've loved every minute of it. Uh, I'm excited for a new, a new season coming up. Obviously, we've got a season like I'm, uh, anything other. We're hoping that we obviously have a season, and we won't hope everybody's health is as, as best it can be, of course. Uh, but we have obviously a men's, women's team that we – our combined program. We have a sprint coach, Sherry, who's in charge of sprinting, and Yolanda, who's in charge of a stroke group, and Coach D who oversees distance group. Uh, and, and Jordan, as you mentioned, also helps coach the sprinters and anybody and every, everywhere, everyone else. Uh, coach Tice, our head diving coach, uh, takes care of all the divers. We've got great support uh, at BYU, both uh, just everybody in our athletic department. It's one of the best athletic departments in the whole country, all the way from our athletic director, Tom Homo, to every single person that's involved. It's an awesome place to be. We've got these two awesome athletes as well that are excited to share a little bit about their experience as well. Gotcha. Thanks, John. So uh, let's see. I see that Tice quickly made it into the, the dry, diving dry land room. So Tice, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what's it like to coach at, uh, at BYU Dive here? Hey, guys. Uh, so I'm Tice Routson, the diving coach. I've been uh, with BYU this week, uh, the fifth season, a little more. Uh, but love being here. It's a great place to, to work great students, great athletes. Uh, one, one benefit that we have from here is an indoor dry land training room right here. If you can see a little bit, they've converted this uh, racquetball court in the, uh, the Richards building into a little area that uh, all the divers can use. There's a trampoline with a spotting system and also kind of those numbers, if you can see them from right there, the for, for spotting and for kind of identifying where you are in the air. And then a dry land diving board here that they can use to kind of practice their tricks as well. And of course, lots of mats to do their flipping and tumbling and really mimicking uh, the action and making that muscle memory. So we've got also some, some TVs and videos set up uh, in a way that they can receive instant feedback uh, for everything that they're doing. They even kind of set up a little boom box right there for their music, everything that they need to, uh, to get themselves pumped up 
and enjoying a good day of workout. It's a great place to be. Uh, you can see what the pool is just a little bit, but this is just an added benefit that we have to be able to, to work out in dry land and really do a lot of repetitious dives and actions here before we take it and practice it at the pool. So this is one little room. I'll kind of make my way over to uh, where the pool is, but I'll turn it back to you, Jordan. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Tice. Now, quickly, I want to talk to our participants out there. This Zooming, Zoom meeting is a little different. You'll see a little section for q and I'm on an Android device. I see it on the top right of my phone. But if you look around, you'll see a little question and answer button. If you want to go ahead and submit questions, I'm going to pick from there the questions that we ask our coaches and athletes later. So fill that up, and then I can go through and pick some cool questions. Hopefully, you get a cool question that gets answered. So. I want to talk, uh, I want the coaches, John and Tice, to start thinking about two things. One, what's something that makes the athlete on here uh, a good person, an awesome person to coach, and also what makes them a good athlete? So, John Brooks, you've got Jared Shaw here. What makes Jared an awesome person to interact with, and also what makes him a great athlete competing here at BYU? It's huh. a great question. Well, Jordan, you work with Jared day in, day out with Sherry, and so you guys would know maybe better than I do. But the things that I know about Jared is that he's always smiling. He's a, he's a team guy. He, he's one of the first guys on the deck to help set up the pool. Um, he's always looking for ways to, you know, to help in that regard. So we're, it, that's a positive thing. We're always looking for people that are team-oriented and want to be a part of the team in that regard. But also, you know, Jared, he's a happy guy. He loves to race. He loves swimming. He loves everybody. He's just a happy person. And, uh, you know, it doesn't help that he's, you know, fast too. And he, he loves to race. And he, I don't know if anybody really, you know, he's kind of one of those guys that likes everybody, you know? I agree. Totally agree. Okay. What makes him a good athlete that helps him get to that next level? Well, he's tall and he's a 50 freestyler and a hundred freestyler and, uh, he does backstroke and butterfly as well. Uh, that helps him. He's very long and, and, and lean in the water. He has a fast tempo. He's got a good kick. Uh, and, he, you know, he moves through the water nicely. He, he rides the water high and high as he can. And, you know, for his events, he, he does a good job of making sure he's as aerodynamic as possible when he goes to the water. Awesome. Love that. Hey, Jared, you just got introduced. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? that we haven't covered already. There's a lot to talk about, but also, um, let's see, what good question do I want you to ask? I want you to tell, you, tell us what the team is like. What's it like to be on that team? All right. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Jared. Um, I'll be going into my senior year this year. Um, this will be my third year uh, swimming with BYU um, because I transferred from a community college back in Tucson, Arizona, where I'm from. Uh, that team didn't have a swim team, but, uh, I swam with, uh, oh, hey, <laughs> I, uh, I swam with a club team there, uh, for a few years, but, um, mainly, uh, this team is honestly, it's honestly just, it's so much fun to be a part of. You saw Connor Sterling there just now. Um, uh, one of my favorite things about this team is for sure that, um, it's got an incredible competitive atmosphere uh, where it's just, we all, we're all looking to have fun, but in a good way that it's, it's productive and it's, it's professional, I would say. Um, and like, we can always, uh, we can always race each other um, with no hard feelings. We can always put, we're always pushing each other to do our best. Um, so uh, like Connor Sterling and Roger Woods this past year, all, all three, the three of us uh, were always neck and neck on the 50 free. Um, uh, one of my favorite swims from this year was we uh, had our senior night against Utah this year. Uh, we took one, two, three in the 50 free and oh my goodness, that was so much fun. <laughs> but this team is just so much fun. There's always good, positive energy. Everybody's cheering for you. Everybody's helping and uh, rooting for you. And it's just, it's just a great time all around. I agree. That was the most inspirational race of the year. That was sweet. <laughs> of course, I'm biased. I'm a sprint coach, but that was freaking awesome. All right, yeah. Coach Tice, you're on. Uh, you're on. What is one thing that makes Kennedy an awesome person to interact with and just know? And also, what makes her an outstanding athlete? 
there we go. Uh, that's that's an easy one to answer. I mean, uh, what makes her awesome is that she's intense. Uh, everything about her, I mean, she's driven uh, in her life. Uh, she's she hasn't been in the sport of diving for a very long time, but has come a long way. Uh, and that's, I mean, just in her second season making the NCAA's uh, just this this last season. But uh, she is she's she's intense. She wants it. Uh, sometimes you know those emotions are are right on the surface because she wants it so so much, which is which is great. And sometimes I just have to bring her back down to say, hey, you're you're new to the sport and you you gotta take it easy. Yeah, uh, that way you can use that emotion for the right the right channels. But uh, she wants it. Yeah, that's, that's what makes her a, a great great person. That uh, that she's dedicated. I mean, she kicks everyone's butt. You know that. Uh, if anyone's not shaping up, let's let's get together. Let's let's, uh, let's have the same focus, you know, as a team. Uh, what makes her a great athlete? I think she's she's skilled gymnast to begin with, and so taking taking that knowledge that she had before in her uh, her acrobatics, and then just turning it from a, a feet first entry to a, a head first entry uh, is is kind of second nature to her. So there's a lot of tricks in diving, a little a lot of acrobatic skills that she's learned in a short period of time. And that's just kind of refining the entry through the water is probably the biggest thing. And she's come a long way through that too. So taking those scores, doing the big dives, but taking the scores from the five and a half to now the seven, seven and a half, eight area. And we're, we're striving for higher and higher. I learned from the best. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the best. I, uh, it's a real pleasure to just work with these guys every day. All right, Kennedy. You're up. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what it's like to, to dive for BYU okay, Dive. Well, I'm Kennedy. I just finished my sophomore year. I'm 20. Um, I was actually a competitive gymnast for 12 years. Um, so after my sophomore year of high school, I switched over to diving in like the fall of my junior year of high school um, and just did high school diving for a couple months. And after a couple months, I kind of got the diving bug and... <laughs> decided I wanted to keep doing it. So I joined a club and reached out to Tice and Tice took a chance on me. <laughs> I really was not great when I got recruited, but Tice definitely took a chance on me with some potential and he's done a really good job coaching. Easy um, decision and best decision ever. <laughs> um, in terms of like what the team is like, I, it was the main reason why I came to BYU. I was recruited by other schools like University of Arizona and Utah, Georgetown, San Diego State. Like I had a lot of schools that I was looking at, but um, there is nothing that really could replace the feeling of being at BYU and the people at BYU. Like it just, the team was by far the most unified that I had seen. And um, yeah, there's just a different special feeling about the team at BYU. And it makes me really grateful to be there every day. I gotcha. I mean, the I couldn't agree more. I don't know of a single place where you develop as quickly and as fully just your entire humanness than at BYU. I think this is an awesome place, but again, I'm biased. Okay. Well, I want to see some videos. So coach Brooks, are you ready to show us a video you've got prepared? John. Yes. I, so we've got a 50 free video that we're going to show. Um, cool. And uh, this is of Jared Shaw uh, from this last season. And uh, it's um, his uh, race from Texas. As soon as I get, won't we, won't we ask Jordan, give me a second to get this up and running. Ask a question to uh, Jared real fast. <laughs> well, okay. I can answer some questions. You guys have already asked some to make sure we get to them. So yeah. let's see here. Mm, what's your favorite part of campus? Kennedy and Jared, ready, go. What's your favorite part of campus? The RV pool. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, if we're not saying the RV, I would say, hmm. Okay, well, I'm a science major, so I actually really like the Benson building. It's a chemistry building. A lot of people hate it in there, but I really like it. <laughs> or the student athlete building. It's a really nice building where the athletes study and we get food there and just hang out with friends. So I really like that building as well. 
Yeah, there's one part of campus right next to the Wilk that if you walk uh, walk through this time of the year, it's just gorgeous. There's, all the plants have bloomed. It's so green and vibrant. Uh, and it's just, I love walking through campus this time of year. It's just gorgeous, honestly. Gotcha. I'll, I'll chime in here. Uh, I swam here not too long ago. And the, the mats on the pool are <laughs> made for some of the best naps you'll ever take. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. You guys every follow day. the account BYU Sleeps. Jordan got posted on it. <laughs> I'm taking I'm it there, like every month I'm in there in a different position. So <laughs> if you're looking for a place to uh, work hard and then be deserving of some naps, this is a place to be. Oh yeah. Okay, hey, Jordan, I'm ready for you. You're ready. Okay, let's do the video. Okay, so the just so you people out there that are watching this, the very the best way we're doing this is we have a TV and I'm just using my phone to project on TV so it's Easiest and best way for us to do this. And uh, this is Jared Shaw's 50 Free, so it'd only be about 20 seconds or so. Uh, Texas, a month or so, a month or two ago. And uh, Jared, why don't you give us a little commentation here? All right, so I'm uh, second from the camera. Um, so this swim was interesting because this was a 50 Free split in, as part of a one free. And so that's why it looks like I'm going so much faster than everybody else. Uh, right next to me there is Connor Sterling, who uh, honestly, going for the hundred. he's a huge drive for me, but that 50 itself, um, that was such an amazing swim for me because um, <clears throat> I'd been trying all season to try to get a, a, a cut low enough for it to qualify to NCs and just trying over and over. So like Missouri and at conference, I did five different swims at each of those, just didn't quite make it, <clears throat> finally coming to this last chance meet. Um, took me a few swims uh, till I could finally get a hang of it, but I finally got up behind the blocks, got myself uh, uh, pumped up enough for that swim and just was able to rock out an amazing swim. Uh, one of the big things that I was focusing on for this swim was trying to get my uh, tempo up right from the get go, right from that breakout, just going as fast as possible, as quick as possible. And I managed to get that and do that really well. Um, and just everything about that race just was uh, just went super well. I uh, got through that turn super smooth, got right off the wall, had a great uh, line on my underwater. All my breakouts were super smooth, super quick, and I was able to just bring it home really, really well. So <laughs> watching this video always gets my blood boiling. <laughs> <laughs> In a good way. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's the best part about being a coach is to kind of help you guys and coach you guys, but it's you guys that are in the water and swimming and diving and to see you guys get a goal. That's just the best freaking feeling in the world. It's awesome. Hey, Jared, can you tell us what your time was in that 53? Uh, that was in 1929. So fast. <laughs> All right. Tice, are you ready for a video? You've got a video prepared. Well, why don't we ask Kennedy a quick question, then I'll get guys can get up and running. Okay, cool. Let's uh, get another question going. Let's see. We got a couple yeah. athletes playing some with some games on us. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, this one's easy. Another another lob, and I would do shout outs. However, we're not allowed to say your guys' names, so I'm just gonna say this Cougar fan has a question. What is the best part about being on the team? We've kind of already answered that, but to put a little bit of a different spin, what's the best part about the young men or the young women that you happen to compete with every day? Let's ask that. I'm. I would say. Hmm. There's a lot of good parts, so it's hard to just like pick one, but I think, I just think the unity of the team is really impressive, and the fact that I can trust these people with anything, and the fact that we all really cheer for each other um, for in practice and in competitions, like I really feel supported when like I'm trying to try a new dive, and all the guys are like, come on, like you can do it, like hyping me up, and like everyone will just clap when you do a good dive or when you do a bad dive. And so that's like, at least on the diving side of things, I feel like that's my favorite part. It's just the people that I get to experience um, this amazing opportunity with every single day. I feel that. I feel that on multiple levels because I feel that as a team, as a whole, the swim and dive team, but also your subgroup. So the divers, 
it's like a subgroup. The sprinters, it's like a subgroup. So in each one, you have your big old family, your extended family, and you've got your individual kind of closer families as well. So uh, I can yeah. feel that. That's good. All right, Jared, same question. Honestly, just along the same lines is that um, those days that you're just feeling really down, you're dragging, you just can't quite get yourself to get up and go. You've got the guys next to you, the people next to you in your group or whoever is just uh, nearby. They're always there to reach out and be like, hey, are you doing all right? And, and to cheer you on, to drive you forward and help you swim fast or dive high. <laughs> Totally agree. Uh, as a collegiate swim team, you come here because you're sort of an outlier, like you're already fast or you're already really proficient at diving and everybody's like that. And so to learn from people who are the best of their field, it's just really, it's challenging, but it's also just makes you so much better yeah. and to the fact that these are your friends. This is your family. Awesome place to be. Okay. Tice, are you ready for the video of Kennedy here? Yeah, now we're ready. Let's do cool. it. Okay. Let me get in here. Okay, got got a few videos to share. Uh, oh, this some is of these zones. Are <laughs> zones, just this last one. I have no idea what he's going to show. <laughs> so we got one dive there, but we're going to play around with it just a little bit and see if we can. Uh, rewind it talk talk through kind of some of the coaching points of this dive uh she's doing some awesome stuff here and getting good height so there's where the spotting ability like she sees the water come around from right there she knows how to open up and she's way above the board really good i would say one thing we got to do is just kind of work on that toe point all the way through the dive <laughs> but she's come a, a, a long way and creating some good actions there just a tad bit of over rotation, but it's beautiful, beautiful dive there. Uh, I got another one, and this is kind of a this is kind of a, a big girl dive. I mean, not many girls throughout the, the nation do this dive. And here at our zone meets, it's called a reverse two and a half, and this is from the one meter springboard. So it's a new dive for her, but something we kind of threw in there, and uh, she had to rise to the occasion just to be able to to do this dive, do it, do it well to qualify uh, to NCAAs. And I would say like having this dive in her list kind of put it, uh, you know, into her future. So this is a big dive. Like I said, maybe there's only like two or three that competed it at this meet. So, I mean, that's a, that's a big dive and she did it awesome. I think that was my first one. My second one was better. <laughs> Your second one was better. Yeah, that was prelims. Yeah, my second one was a lot better. I didn't catch finals. But, yeah. And then kind of what we do, and I, can, I can't figure out how to only just get the, uh, my messages, but what we do with platform, what we do with our platform training, because, I mean, we have a, a five-meter platform here. And actually, with uh, no pool in the water, maybe that's kind of like a 10-meter platform, but we need water. <laughs> but uh, we go to different places to get our 10-meter practice uh, and learn in big dives. And Kennedy, she swears that she's not a platform diver, but I'm trying to bring it, uh, bring it out of her. So she's already learned, I think, you two or three new dives <laughs> up, on the, up on the high 10-meter platform. But what we have to do is we have to go to different places uh, to get that practice. Uh, so we go to any place that has platform, the places that we compete platform, you know, we might get there a few more hours early to get the, that platform 10 meter uh, practice in before the meet. But, uh, this is a, another big dive that she's learned and I'll try to zoom in as much as I can on it. So I'll know, but nice and sunny, but you can see. Oh my gosh, that's so high. That, that's a big dive and learning into the bubbles, uh, which kind of helps in the safety. But she's, she's a 10 meter diver and she needs to start admitting that to herself right now. But she's, she's talented and got all the potential in the world. Uh, and yeah, I look forward to seeing what she can do in this next year. Gotcha. I love that. I love the fact that um, 
when you come here, it's not that you're done with your challenges and you've arrived. No, you still have fears. You still have things to overcome. And it's your habit of working through those things, your mental strength, as well as your character strength that gets you through those things. That's kind of what we're looking for. So I love that, which goes into our next question. This one is for the coaches. Let's see. What do you, this, this Cougar fan asks, what do you look for to be recruited on the BYU swim or dive team? So what do you exactly do you look for? Let's start with John on this one, and then we'll do Tyson on the next one. Okay. Or, um, yeah. Decided to come up here on the seating area, maybe a little better view, maybe. Yeah, so obviously, you know, like we were talking about with Jared Shaw and Kennedy, we're always looking for high-quality people, people that we want to be around, so good students and uh, happy people, motivated people, people that want to uh, – be high achievers, um, but BYU, it's not an easy school to get into. We do have athletic exceptions, of course, and so we are looking for people that wanna be at a BYU environment. We have an honor code of BYU. That have, most of the people who are on here are probably familiar with that or maybe have spent some time at BYU maybe, but uh, <clears throat> besides that, obviously for divers, you gotta have you know, the proper amount of dives that uh, you need to have and for swimmers. We're looking for times that would be beneficial to make our team as best as possible. I did notice that a lot of the questions, Jordan, do have to do with, I guess, recruiting in general. And so I would highly encourage anybody out there, you're, you're more than welcome to send us emails and you can find our emails online and we'd be happy to respond to you. There are certain restrictions if you are in high school and it's before June 15th of going into your junior year, we can't respond to you uh, based off of the a, a rules. And obviously, you please follow us on social media because uh, that's a great way to hear a lot of good stuff about our team. But uh, we have an online uh, recruiting form that you can fill out on uh, byucougars.com on the swimming page. And that's probably the best way because we can get your information. But uh, you know, keep on bugging us, keep on updating us with times and dives, anything you can, because we'd love to hear from you guys out there. That's a good point. Yeah, follow us on Instagram. We really try to do a good job on Instagram. And then right after this meeting, I'm going to go back into Instagram and change the link in our bio from this Zoom meeting to that recruiting form. So if you want to be seen, go fill that out right after this call. Okay, Tice, same question. What do you look for? Uh, what I look for in, uh, in recruiting is really just kind of drive and potential. Um, I mean, you obviously – in Division One, you want to be up to that standard of competing with uh, the other kids, and so some of those big dives, uh, the two and a half in all directions, is is required uh, to, to kind of get you that level. But it's but it's your your drive and your determination uh, to be able to learn those dives, and we do a lot of learning here, um, you know, kind of daily to get us to that next level. And so if you have that that dedication, that you have you know good body lines and you're willing to kind of work hard there's there's a lot we can learn and just like we we do as a team we learn in the dry land room first in the belts and the spotting and then we kind of bring those tricks over to the water uh, and learn them safely but we're always kind of striving to to learn new things and so that's that's what I look for someone who's who's determined they're they're willing to to show videos of their progress and say hey this is where I was two months ago and this is where I'm going and that's kind of where it comes, what it comes down to is just that, that continual progress and, and drive. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to take this, the same question, but to the athletes now. So from a recruiting perspective, athletes, Jared and Kennedy, what are you looking for in a teammate? Um, I really like somebody who, uh, who's competitive, but in a, in a healthy way, in a way that really, uh, really helps to strive others to, to improve. Um, somebody who, who's not afraid to challenge you to a race during practice or to um, somebody that you can look forward to racing at meets and stuff. Um, just somebody who's very positive in their swimming, I, I would say was, is the best. That's perfect. I feel like for me, oh, <laughs> I feel like for me um, I also really like having competitive teammates. Like some of my most fun practices I can remember are like when I'll be doing a dive and like one of the guys will be doing the same dive and then we'll look at Tyce and be like contest, like 
whoever scores <laughs> higher, like we win. And so then like, it just like kind of like gives you an extra edge to try and make your corrections and trying to do your dive better than your teammate. <laughs> um, but I also really, really value hardworking teammates and like knowing that like we're all going to the trenches together and like we're all pulling our own weight. And so like, it just is like inspiring to be around people that like sometimes if you're having a bad day or something and you can turn and see that your teammate is working super hard, it also motivates you to work hard as well. I love that. That's a big part of the team. A lot of people just look at the times or the scores that you have to get, but they don't consider the character development, the type of person that they're trying to be. That's, again, I, th I don't think there's any better place besides BYU that you can develop as a whole person. And being a good teammate is a big part of that. So, awesome. Okay, let's do more questions. Let's see here. All right. So I should have some of these ready for you guys beforehand. All right, this is a question for, for Coach John. How many swimmers do you have that are, are not Latter-day Saints? Uh, that's a good question. I'm going to put this back around. That's a good question. Uh, you know, it, I'm gonna, before I answer that question, our job here at BYU is to find people that are in line with the mission of the university and with the honor code at BYU. And so um, obviously we, you know, the majority of the people that do come to BYU are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And uh, because of the nature of the university and the, the church that sponsors this great university. Uh, but we also are um, always looking for people that meet the standards and meet the times and the dives that we're looking for, for to be members of our team. And so, uh, you know, on the women's team, out of 34 women on the women's team, we have three or four, uh, you know, pretty much every year. And on the men's team, you know, right now it's only one or two, but maybe it'd be three or four. Or so just a handful probably on each team. Uh, and every team at BYU is, is uh, you know, football, basketball, you know, volleyball might be a little bit different. Um, but we always have a, a variety of different people. But when it all boils down to it, it's more of the, the values that each one of, one of you bring to BYU. And we find that the majority of the people, whether or not they're members of the church, of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, or not, have similar values. And, and it's also what helps us to uh, be more united because we all have a, a, a like value system. That's good. Awesome. Yeah, honestly, it's just character. Just looking for people of character regardless of denomination. And I think John put it best. Cool. This one is for the athletes. What does a typical week look like for a college athlete? Let's start with Kennedy on this one. Okay. Um, I feel like my schedule this past semester is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, I'm a biology major looking to potentially do pre-med or get a PhD in biomedical engineering. And so my semesters generally include at least one three hour lab. Um, and so generally like I would have practice seven to nine and then I would either have an hour break or another class from nine to 10. I'd have practice again, 10 to 12, usually like a half hour to an hour break where I'd go get lunch. And then I would do, usually have class from like one to like three or four, sometimes six, depending if I had a lab. And then I would be get dinner and then study at the student athlete building from like 7 p.m. to like 9 30 10 p.m. then I go home and do it all over again <laughs> that's a lot of work so I guess Kennedy you're saying that you kind of have to master time management for sure right? get a planner <laughs> <laughs> honestly that can't be overstated um I thought I was organized in high school and then I came here and oh my gosh yeah, yeah. so you gotta you gotta know your stuff okay Jared same question what's uh the schedule like for a swimmer all right, so um, it's it's fairly busy. So we've got doubles on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, we'll do a practice in the morning and a practice in the afternoon. So I generally try to schedule my classes around those practices and as well as try to make sure that I've got at least 30 minutes to an hour to eat because um, a big part of being a college athlete is making sure that you're well-fed so that you can do your job as an athlete. And of course, um, it, it can't be overstated how important it is to make sure that you're well-fed even as a student. So um, once, I've, once I've got a solid schedule with that, then it's really just a matter of making sure that I'm staying consistent with my classes, trying to keep up to date or ahead as much as possible. 
Um, and uh, honestly, we have so many resources here for student athletes that are just amazingly helpful. Um, I definitely would not be able to manage everything on my own without, uh, without all these resources. Like uh, Kennedy mentioned, we had the uh, we have the student athlete building, which is open for long periods of time, and it's just a nice area to go. And it's you can get some quiet areas. You can go and hang out with your uh, with teammates and friends, um, and you can and all. Uh, Obviously, there's always people that you have classes with. They also offer tutors up there that you can schedule with. Um, but for, for a general week, um, it's really just a matter of making sure that you stay consistent, you stay, uh, you make sure that you're taking care of yourself and um, you just work hard. <laughs> Good, love it, awesome. Okay, next question is for Tice. This uh, says, what is the recruitment process like? All right. Uh, I mean, any interest and in, in going along with, uh, with, with what John said, uh, you don't have to be a member, member of the church, uh, you know, to come here. It's, it's, it's character. It's, it's your drive. You know, it's the type of person um, you are that can bring you here. The recruiting process, uh, number one, is kind of going to uh, filling out that questionnaire online. So, you know, I know who you are, who, you know, what you've done. And then the best thing for me is, is sending videos of, of your diving, uh, seeing, seeing the actions and, the, and the, the skill that you have as well as your potential. Uh, and then communicating with me constantly uh, about that progress that you're making. It's, it's a very simple process. It doesn't have to be, you know, some, you know, movie grade uh, videos of, of what you're doing. It doesn't even have to be, you know, the best dives. It, you know, for my trained eye, it's, it's seeing the potential that you have and, and knowing that, okay, you know, with, with a little bit of, of my help and, and mostly your drive that, that I can see where you're going from there. Uh, so recruiting process, uh, just send me all those uh, selfies and of your videos and whatnot. Gotcha. Good. John, anything to add that we missed? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, no, not really. I think that, uh, you know, what is a typical process? Yeah. I mean, obviously we have recruiting visits for people. Um, I, I'm not on here. I'm showing you the pool. So I just figured it'd be fun for you guys to see, but yeah, I mean, we have people come on recruiting visits. Uh, you know, sometimes we'll do home visits, obviously none of that's taking place right now. Uh, and so those are fun things to do. We keep in contact with moms and dads. And just so people know this, like we contact and talk to other coaches and your coaches to make sure that you know, you're good, a good person because we want good people on our team. And uh, obviously, like Tice was saying, we're watching races. We're going. I think there's a question, a question on there is how often do we go to Texas or any of these other places? And, you know, we do our very best to get out there and, and see as many meets as we possibly can. But, you know, sometimes we can't be everywhere. And so sending videos is really helpful. And, uh, you know, those that uh, pique our interest the most, that we do our very best to reach out and find meets, big meets that we can see a lot of summers at the same time at. And, uh, you know, typically, you know, like we were talking about before, uh, we cannot make phone calls or contact anybody until June 15th going into your junior year of high school. If you're before that, we can't even respond to a phone call or email uh, at all. And so it gets a little difficult. Um, but beyond that, then we can make, you know, phone calls and texts and things like that and, and do, uh, you know, whatever, a Zoom conference call for, for like we're doing now. And uh, so there's lots of things that we can do um, after that uh, and just keeping in contact and watching people progress. Awesome. That's really good. I, I, Jordan, I would have to pipe in one other thing is that, uh, you know, both Tyson and, I, and a lot of the BYU people know this, but we do amazing swimming camps and diving camps and other camps here. And that's another way for us just to get a good chance to see people. Uh, it's, it's camps are designed to come and experience a campus and, and an environment, but it's also an opportunity for you know, people to come and show off their talents too. That's good. Awesome. Okay. We're throwing it back to the athletes. We've, at, we've talked a lot about what, the, what it's like to swim at BYU, a lot of the positives. This one isn't necessarily negative. It's the question is, what is the hardest part about being an athlete, at, uh, a B, being a BYU the athlete? So it's just challenging. I'll start with Jared. Um, the hardest part 
is definitely trying to keep on top of everything, especially in the middle or towards the end of each semester. Um, because since uh, with swim and dive, we do travel quite a bit. So you have to make sure that you stay ahead. And sometimes you can get bogged down pretty hard. So you got to really push through and make sure that you're keeping up with everything. Uh, and like I said earlier, I kind of talk about it a lot, but you got to make sure that you're well fed. And that in, its, in and of itself can be incredibly difficult because it's so easy to just to get lazy and just go and get uh, fast food every day but you got to make sure that you're eating healthy. And one thing that's really nice about BYU is the nutrition center that they offer um, a, a lot of really healthy options to the athletes and uh, that we can get with our field cards. So, yeah. Awesome. You just answered another question there. Good job. <laughs> yeah. The hey. nutrition center is in the student athlete building and they, it's run by um, our like athletics nutritionist. Her name is Rachel Higginson. She um, like, staffs it and makes sure there's really good options for everyone there and so it's really nice that the BYU athletics department provides that for us but I would say for me in terms of like what the hardest thing is is like probably like Jared said like probably finding balance with like especially towards the end of the season you're traveling for like up to like a week at a time and it's nice that the athletics department they like we have um, academic advisors for all the teams and they'll send out travel letters to your professor saying that like, okay, this student has this meet over these dates. Like, please, like if there's a test or something, like let them be able to reschedule. And so you kind of just have to be proactive with your professors and be um, on top of it and make sure that like you talk to them if there is a scheduling conflict. And a lot of, I've never had a problem with the professor saying you can't take a test. Like a lot of them, like I'll have to take tests early sometimes, but um, most of the professors are really willing to work with you. So I would say that's probably the hardest thing. I don't feel like the divers have the same problem with eating enough. <laughs> like, I feel like that's a swimmer problem, but <laughs> I don't know. Awesome. Okay, I'll just add my two cents here. Nutrition can't be overstated. At the same time, sleep, make sure you go to bed on time. That's one reason time management is so important. And yeah, you have to study and so that you get your education. But also you got to sleep so that you stay alive and so that you can keep Pete well and so you can study more. So sleep is super important. We have hit 42 minutes now and uh, I think it's time to wrap up guys. But I want you guys to follow us on social media. If you're interested in swimming or diving here at BYU, fill out the recruiting form. And also if you have more questions, you can either direct message the Instagram account I do most of that, uh, most of the answering on there, but not all of it. Sometimes uh, we have a, a student inform or a sport information director answering some questions on there. But also feel free to reach out to the athletes. They're all tagged in the pictures, so you can find one of your favorite athletes and then follow them and then add them. They're like probably your best resources, as you've seen, to answer any questions that you have. Does that make sense, everybody? I don't hear you, but I'm going to assume that you say yes. Okay, coaches and athletes, do you have anything else to say? Anything we missed? Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Good to see you, Jared. Good to see you, Kennedy. Can't wait to, to see you in person and, and start training again. I'm ready. <laughs> I got to run off to practice. So, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, yeah. Sounds good, guys. All right, we're logging off. Thanks for joining in. Go Cougars.